So welcome to the CCNA video series. This is the first video in the series and this will be covering a basic router configuration, looking at some show commands on how to set up IP addresses and other things. And the first thing I'd like to say, if you're studying for your CCNT, which is your ICND1, or your CCNA, the best thing is to get some hands-on experience. There are three ways that I would say that you could do this. The first is to actually obtain a physical router console into the device and start configuring the device. The next way is to use an emulator. Now an emulator, they come in lots of different flavors. You could have GNS3, there's Viral, there is IOU. And what an emulator does, it actually takes a realistic Cisco IOS and runs it in an emulation program. You could even run that emulation program on top of something like VMware. You can do 99% of the actual commands that you would do with a real Cisco router. The downside of an emulator is if you've never actually seen a Cisco router then you're not going to be able to actually plug in, physically plug in cables or physically remove flashcards and these type of things. And the final way to do that is to actually buy a simulator and these again come in numerous different flavours. The two that I can think of off the top of my head are Bolson. So Bolson NetSim Simulator and Packet Tracer, which is a Cisco simulator. I think it's actually made by Cisco themselves. Now, the downside with an, a simulator as opposed to an emulator is that a simulator does just that. It just simulates the command. So not 100% of the commands will be available to you. The upside of having a simulator is that many of them actually come with their own labs. So you can do scenarios with that. But if you could obtain those same sub scenarios and then put them on an emulator, I think that's the better way to go. So number one is get a physical router. If you can't do that, you get an emulator and then the last step is to get a simulator. That being said, I'm actually running a simulator here, one of my favorite flavors. And what I'm going to do, when you first open up a Cisco router, you'll get these commands here where it actually tries to access a TFTP server to download its configuration. Now we're not connected to a TFTP server and we don't have a default configuration to upload. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to press the enter button here. I'm gonna make this full size. You actually see the topology that we're going to be running here. I'm going to have a router which is connected to a laptop so that I can use a terminal program which we'll have a look at a bit later on. First things first, I'll make this full size. I'm gonna press enter a few times. And many people will say, when it says here, would you like to enter the initial configuration dialog? Many people say no, but for the purposes of this video, I will say yes. And it says, would you like to enter basic management setup? This is going to be things like setting up the IP address for management of the device, SNMP, which is out of the scope of this video and also um, setting a host name and basic passwords to access the router. So I will say yes. And we're going to call our, give our router a host name. So let's call it just R1. Now it's saying, would you like to enter an enable secret? When you actually first access the router, if you don't have an enable secret, you could just access the router directly, which isn't very secure, so we will say, yes to enable secret so cisco and the enable secret is a encrypted password now this next one enter and enable password is a plain text password if you have them both on the router then only one of them is going to be valid at one time and they can't be the same password either so if you have an enter enable password which is plain text it will be overridden if you then enter an enable secret password. And as I said, they can't be the same, so I'll call this one Cisco1. Would you like to enter a virtual terminal password? Now, if you're telnetting or SSH in into the router, which means you've got remote access to the router, then you'll probably need a virtual terminal password. This can be the same, so we'll call that Cisco. As I said, SNMP is out of scope for this video. We see here that the router has been assigned an IP address. That's not what I want, so 
I will say, I will add a management network from the above interfaces. Now we'll just copy and paste this because if I just try to shorten it and say E0 slash zero, it doesn't actually take the command. So let's copy and paste this to make sure we get the full interface name. And we're going to give it our own IP address. Now, if I go back to our diagram, we can see that the router has dot one. So 10.1.1.1 will be our IP address. No, our IP address is going to be 10.1.1.1. Now that's a class A IP address, so it gives it a slash eight. That is also not what we want. We want it as a slash 24, so we'll say 255.255.255.0. And if we scroll up, we can see now that that interface is up, and that's what it's been assigned, 10.1.1.1. There are three options for us. We can say go to the IS command prompt without saving this config. We can return back to this setup without saving this config or we can save this config by pressing two. Two is already selected here. So we'll just press enter. And it should allow us to enter into the router now. And there we go. So we can see now we have to put our enable secret password, which is Cisco, to actually access the router. If you didn't have this password, you wouldn't be able to access the router. We press enter. Now, I, I personally, I want to stop these error messages coming up because we don't have a TFTP server. If you're in, this is when you've got this hash sign, it's called privilege mode. And if we press a question mark here, we can see that we have many commands we press spacebar to just spacing so from here we could do help we could format certain file systems we could run our show commands we could reload the router there's many commands here but if i want to actually access the system i will say configure now what i done there i just typed conf and i press tab and it would auto complete if i press question mark here so I can configure memory, network, or the terminal. I want to configure the terminal. Again, I press T-E-R, press tab, auto-complete, and we're into configuration of the terminal. If we press question mark here, we see that we have many, many more commands to actually configure the router. And I want to stop this. I think the command is no service config and I will save that configuration. So I'll say do, again, if I wanted to add these commands, I would say copy running configuration to the startup configuration. There we go. Now, if we wanted to see the startup configuration, we say show start. And this is the configuration that is saved onto the NVRAM, the non-volatile RAM. If the system was to lose power, you would still have this startup configuration. And if I say show start, so we see that the host name is R1, our enable secret is encrypted, which is Cisco. Our enable password is Cisco1. We see that we've got our IP address and we see that we have our password under the VTY line. This is all that was configured when we've done our initial configuration. So if I, again, say configure terminal, and I, if I was to actually do those same commands manually, oh, it's still coming up. No service config. Now the shortcut, if we wanted to do the save commands from here is do WR. Now this means write memory. And this is the same as our, if we scroll up to what we had before. So our write memory here is the same as when we typed in copy run here, copy running config to the startup config equals, we could do this whole command, 
by just typing W R. But let's scroll back down. I think I'm gonna do a quick reload. So write the memory here. I'm gonna do a quick reload. I'll pause the video and I'll come back after the system has rebooted. Okay, that was actually very quick. So the system's back up. If I say conf t, I'm gonna do those same commands. So if I wanted to add a host name, I would actually say host name. Now what I'm gonna go through is just the same configuration but on the CLI rather than using the um, initial config mode let's call it something different we'll call it router 1 and we see that it changes to router 1 here then we're going to say enable secret we'll still call it Cisco enable password we'll call it Cisco 123 this time if we wanted to do a configuration command, we say interface. Now I can shorten these commands. So I say interface E0 slash 0. It's the same as writing out interface Ethernet 0 slash 0. And I will give it an IP address. IP address of 10.1.1.23. Just to show the difference. With a tw slash 24 mask. And I'll say no shut. Now what I want to show you here, if we run a do command here, we could say do rather than um, to get right out. I said I done control Z. So usually there's only certain commands that could be run from here. So you have to do your show commands from here. But if I go conf T just to show you that you can't do them. So if I was to do a show command here, show IP interface brief, it won't allow me. So you could you have to do those commands from here. Show again I can shorten this IP INT brief and it shows that this interface is up but if I didn't want to have to keep coming out jumping back and forth I could do a do so I say do show IP interface brief and it allows me to run that same command from configuration mode if I also do a do show running config we can say, see that in the running running config, there's certain differences. So, router is called R1. The enabled password is Cisco123. And the IP address is 10.1.1.23. But if I say I do show startup config, we can see that it still has our original. So, if we were to now start up the machine, we'll start it up with R1, it will have the password of Cisco 1, and also the Ethernet will be called 10.1.1.1. So the startup config is not the same as the running config. So what I will do here, I will say copy the startup config to the running. because I want all those original commands to come back. Um, what I'm just basically doing, I'm copying over what I started up the machine to what is now running so that I could go back to what I had. Show IP interface brief. I don't want to see all those other interfaces, so I'll say exclude the unassigned addresses. And now we can see that we have our interface as 10.1.1.1. Brilliant. So what I'm going to now show you, I'm going to show you the line configuration. So if we say conf t and we say do show run, if I pipe, and the pipe is the line that goes down, it's on my keyboard, it's next to the shift on the left. So the left shift, you have a line coming down, so you press shift and left and it gives you the pipe. Then I say section line, so I could jump straight to the line section. Now I see that. I have a password, a Cisco, and a login. If I minimize this, and I open up my terminal session, again, the terminal sessions come in many different flavors. You could have TerraTerm. If you're running Windows XP, there's one called HyperTerm. Um, there's a paid one called Secure CRT, which is very good. But I'm using this one, which is a free one called Putty. And if I open up Putty, and I try to Telnet, 
if I say through my serial connection, now these are the, the default commands that you're looking for. So you're looking for your, your board rate to be 9600, your data bits to be eight, your stop bits to be one, and your parity to be zero or none. I'll go back to my session, but I'm actually going to Telnet, not use the serial port. And I'm going to Telnet to 10.1.1.1. Mm, okay, I know why that is. It's because this IP address is not the same. Um, I'm using a virtual terminal, so if I if I open up my virtual terminal and it's disabled, so if I enable that and I give it an IP address of what I want. I say this IP address is 10. Dot, what does it say? 1.2. On a slash 24. And I say OK. OK. Close this. Now if I go back to my router and I try to ping that IP address. That's my local one. If I try to ping the actual laptop IP address, and I can see I can ping it. So if I minimize this now, so use Telnet 10.1.1.1. I see that I can SSH. I'm going to use my password, which is Cisco, the virtual terminal password. Enable. Now I need my enable password, which is also Cisco and I see that I can tell net to the actual device. So this was just a quick foray into basic router configuration. We looked at the initial configuration, then we went on manually to configure a host name, an IP address, and the enable secret. I hope you watch all my videos. Please subscribe if you like them and press the like button, and I'll see you in the next video.